Hi, thanks for listening. This is the It's All Widgets Flutter podcast. My name is Hilla Korn, and each episode we get the chance to talk with another amazing Flutter developer. This episode, we're lucky to be speaking with Baranadin. Welcome, Baranadin. Really happy to have you on the podcast. Can you share a bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Baranadin Rashid, and I'm from India. And currently, I'm working as an application developer at Technogize in Pune. I have a one-year-old son. And I'm open source enthusiast and I'm a lot into community stuff. Uh, I write blogs and I speak at conferences. And in my free time, I answer people's questions on Stack Overflow. Cool. What got you interested in Flutter originally? Uh, actually, I uh, first heard about Flutter in uh, day of the stand about in last year, 2017. And currently, uh, from that onwards, I was looking for a solution uh, to make a uh, a single, single code based uh, app which works both on Android and iOS because uh, the company which I was working on were have a requirement for you know building a app same as Android and same in iOS so they were hiring two resources so I was looking for a solution which provide a, a you know a better uh, a solution for uh, making the hybrid apps so I first started with the React Native, but uh, it was really difficult to, you know, uh, learning curve, learning curve from Android to JavaScript. So that time I dropped the uh, React Native, and then I heard about Flutter at Devfest. Uh, then I started using Flutter at that time. So uh, you know, from the, you know, uh, the documentation is pretty simple. So I just started uh, Flutter within a 30 minutes by reading the document. So that uh, catch me more interested in Flutter. Nice. Can you describe any of the apps yeah. you're working on? Uh, currently, I don't have any pro- app in the production, but as a side project, uh, there is an app called What to Do, which I started uh, creating while learning Flutter. So basically, the thing was uh, I have uh, started uh, with the basic example, which was provided in the documentation, but I was I want to have something more, uh, some a uh, real world application, so that I can understand the better use case for the Flutter. So I was thinking what to do now and the idea came that better to create an app called what to do, which is nothing but a simple uh, uh, you know, to do app which maintain your task depending upon your project. You can provide multiple labels uh, depending upon the date. You can sort your uh, uh, task within the date, project and label, etc. Cool. I know the app. Uh, the UI is beautiful. It's a really cool looking app. Did a great job with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. And it's uh, earlier it uh, was on you know simple state management. Then I moved it uh, into a block. Oh, I see. Interesting. Can you talk about the comparisons between the original architecture and the, and the block architecture? Yeah. Uh, in earlier stage, uh, when I started, uh, you know, understanding the Flutter as a beginner, I just using the state state method everywhere. So as app started to grow, I saw that that that. The code was not clean at that time. I have to, you know, uh, understand where I'm setting the state, what is the thing which are changing, what are the things which are not changing. So I was uh, looking for, you know, a uh, architecture solution for, uh, you know, uh, scale, make my app scalable. So I was looking through uh, scope model and the block. So after a little bit of research, I came to uh, a block pattern. So I, which is nothing but a business logic component. And basically, it's uh, heavily relies on stream. So I started using that block pattern, and most of my, I mean, all of my widget earlier was a stateful, and now I don't have any stateful widget. All are stateless, and they only rely on uh, streams. Right. I also find right. I think it's kind of a, a code smell. If you have, can sometimes mean your state is too much in the UI, and should maybe be lifted up. Plus, it's a little hard to you know figure it out what component are changing and what not because uh, you have to define so many global variables in your stateful widget that you don't understand which is actually changing and which is not. So you have to uh, provide a final, non-final, and it was kind of little bit. The code was basically not clean, and everything was uh, you know putting on the flutter uh, in your app uh, logic and even. Uh, uh, your business logic was also going into your main app classes. So it separates your business logic from that. So it's a very cleaner way to do that. That's interesting. Are there any aspects in particular you like most about Flutter? Uh, the thing most about, since I am from Android background, uh, obviously I like uh, the hot reload feature because I was waiting for a Gradle to build a long time. 
so obviously the hot reload is there but apart from the hot reload it's the have a you know the ui flexibility over uh, how you can create your ui it's very flexible in android in android you have to think for something like is it already there is a, a you know a layout is available or not or you have to look for a library or something but in in flutter the thing about the the good thing about flutter you have is that they have been studying studying the android or the mobile platform for so long that they know that what are the common requirements they need by building the ui so every time i try to you know do something i already find a widget for that so that is a very good thing in flutter plus uh, it is back it is built and maintained by google so it's good that whatever the google products are there they are already providing plugin for flutter like the firebase and uh, recently they have uh, started uh, the google maps preview and the web view as well so it's a good that google also is uh, uh, inserting their products in the flutter as well and the last one and the major one is that i like uh, you know the community for the flutter so there has been a big raise in the community for the flutter if you ask a simple question wherever you are on the twitter on the slack you will get the instant reply and if you are asking to build something you will get a widget name that yeah this is the widget name you can do uh, create your widget uh, inside that so i like the most about that in flutter right i couldn't agree more i think the community is amazing yeah. and i hope it stays that way as uh, flutter popularity yeah. continues to grow um, are there things yeah. in flutter you'd like to see changed uh the thing is like um, since it's majorly focused on uh, ui side but there might be some requirement a simple basic requirement to you know uh, add some uh, platform specific feature like uh, notification and camera so there are already plugins available but if you want to do something custom then it's uh, really difficult to do through a platform channel because the api of the platform channel doesn't seem that easy to understand at first so i would think that they should provide a better api approach for the platform channel i know you speak regularly at conferences are there common questions you hear yeah so the most common question is i uh, hear is what do you think about flutter and react native what would you choose between flutter and react native so basically uh, you know there is no uh, one simple answer uh, the normal answer i give is that if you are happy uh, they majorly ask that would you want to switch from react native or flutter or flutter to react native i basically say that if you are really happy with react native then there is no need to change if you are happy then there is no need to change if there are some flaws and if you don't like the way react native works then try out flutter then you will see that how much different it has between uh, the flutter and react native so that's my uh, common answer for them and the other uh, question which i asked uh, uh, the most is that uh, flutter support x or something like uh, platform specific is that Uh, flutter support notification and sensor and uh, camera and all that so my uh, basic thing about flutter is that first you must know that flutter is built to create a flexible ui beautiful ui it doesn't meant to design to support the you know platform specific feature so basically i tell people that if you want to do something platform specific your app is heavily rely on platform thing then you should better go with native uh, otherwise if you are want a beautiful ui go with flutter that's good advice uh, do you have any specific flutter tips you'd like to share yeah the, recently i uh, saw uh, the flutter io tweet about creating a stateful or stateless widget so currently i was uh, doing uh, you know uh, just copying the whole uh, uh, if i try to create a ui and it's it's getting more nested that i try to make a separate widget for that so whenever i try to do that i just copy the layout uh, copy the code and just create a new class and then i paste it now in the recent uh, you know intellij there is a uh, there is a tool which uh, used uh, to refactor your current code into directly stateful or stateless widget you have to just select a code and just extract that into a widget so it will copy whole your code into another separate widget and it will replace where it have you been been copied so it will save you a lot of time Cool. Sounds super useful. Yeah. Are there any p- areas of Flutter you're trying to learn about more yourself? Uh, currently, I'm exploring the you know the block better uh, to you know uh, understand the better. Uh, currently, I'm as a beginner on that level, so I want to explore that as well. I have heard about uh, Rx VMS and Rx command as well, so in future I'll try I'll try to explore that as much as possible as well. Nice. Me too. Yeah. Is there any advice you'd give to someone just starting out? uh just starting out uh, flutter is very you know 
it's uh, you know it's how it's different from the react native is that about the documentation and getting started when i started with react native it took me around 3 to 4 hours to just set up a hello world app so in flutter the documentation is so good that it will take you just 30 minutes to start with flutter i might be 30 minutes might be more but it will gets the minimum amount i'm telling so it's the best thing to start with the documentation it's pretty good and after just creating a simple basic layout like uh, you know understanding the flutter uh, widget tree and all that stuff try to create a real world application just you know there are flutter challenges uh, you know clone ui whatsapp ui instagram ui just try to create those ui into your flutter app so you will understand the you know widget more the purpose of that widget for a specific use case so it will make you more uh, you know understand the widget better cool IDE of choice, IntelliJ, Android Studio, or VS Code. Uh, basically, I want to keep separate uh, thing for my Android and for uh, Flutter, so I use IntelliJ. But Android Studio and IntelliJ are pretty much same. But for Flutter, I use IntelliJ. Uh, anything else you'd like to add or promote? Yeah, sure. So I have uh, writing uh, blogs from past six or seven months. I have started a series for, called Flutter for Android Developers, so you can check it th- that out, and you can. Uh, Uh, contribute to my what to do app. Currently, I'm looking to integrate some notification and camera feature. So, if you are able to do that, then all the PRs are welcome. And you can check out my website for uh, more details. And, and what's your website? People. Uh... It's uh, it's burhantrashis52. dot github. dot io. Okay, great. And we'll have it in the podcast description, so you can just yeah, click the link. Yeah, sure. Burhantin, thank you very much for taking time to be on the podcast. If anyone else listening would like to tell their story, go to itsowitches.com and click podcast in the top right. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you for having me.